Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome back to the second lecture on blockchain technology. In the first lecture we discussed and saw the basic foundations of blockchain. One aspect we must have realized by now is that whole technology is heavily, heavily dependent on cryptography. The, this technology cryptography is what provides blockchain with the capability to provide security, integrity, various capabilities like being tamper proof, uh, keeping so and how people authenticate, how they prove that who they are so that they are the authorized to use the blockchain, make changes to the blockchain. It is all heavily dependent upon cryptography. I already have used some terms like hashing, PKI, encryption. So, in this we need to understand cryptography a little. So, the second lecture is dedicated to under understanding this key technology which drives blockchain and we will see the varieties what is cryptography. As, we, as I mentioned, cryptography is a key foundation of blockchain. Cryptography is an art of encrypting things, so that only people understand, only people who should have access to information have access, others are kept away, you cannot change without authorization, integrity is maintained, various things. A key aspect of information security in general and cryptography is to ensure three key elements. One is confidentiality, see, confidentiality means if I send you a message which only you are supposed to read, if somebody intercepts, remember when I send you a message over, over internet, even if you are sitting in the next room, the message may travel across the world and reach you. We do not know which paths the internet traffic takes. So, anywhere, anybody anywhere in the SIST process in the chain, in the internet, in the whole network potentially can intercept this message. They can see the message, they can read it, change it. So, confident cryptography has to ensure that if I send you a message to you which is meant for you only, it will ensure that only you can read, nobody else. If I send a message to all my shareholders, only shareholders should be allowed to see, nobody else. If I send a message to my employees, only employees are allowed to see that, nobody else. That is the first element that cryptography should ensure. Second part is integrity. Integrity has many meanings, but in the context of information security, Integrity means any change to the information, any change, any modification, any addition can only be done by authorized persons. No illegal unauthorized changes are allowed and whenever any change has been done, we should be able to trace who made the change, when and why if possible. So, that aspect is integrity. The third, third part is availability. If I send you a message and your system is down, somebody is hacked into your system. So, it is no longer available. I am running an e-commerce site, all my rivals are somebody, some hacker has attacked and brought my site down. I have announced a special deal this today, tomorrow we have 50 percent off on all our smartphones. So, you all want to come to my site and buy the smartphones, but my site has been brought down. So, it is no longer available, even that can affect security, it affects my business. So, any aspect of security, this is called a security triad, confidentiality, integrity and availability conveniently forms the acronym CIA and cryptography also has to ensure the three parts, confidentiality, integrity and availability. And cryptography, the name, it ensures security, integrity and availability of data and operations using encryption. So, that is the definition of cryptography, encryption means safely transmitting messages or information from one party to another without being able to be tampered, changed or anything using methods, using mathematical methods and other methods like coding, codes, encryption codes or encryption algorithms. So, that essentially is cryptography. How do we secretly? Uh, they have a long history, cryptography has a long history. In the old days, for example, when the kings were fighting wars, they had to send a message to their generals in the field. If they send a message to a general, what if the if somebody from the opposing army catches hold of that? 
So, they had to send it in a secret manner, only that generals they send the message, general should be able to read. So, they came up with different different cryptographic methods, simple simple methods starting from the Roman times. In fact, one of the simplest methods of cryptography is called Caesar, crypto, Caesar algorithm or the Caesar cryptography. This is a more formal definition. Cryptography or cryptology is the practice and study of techniques for secure communications in the presence of third parties called adversaries. I am sending you a message, the danger is that a third party, an adversary can intercept the message, read it, take action, change it, give you a wrong information. This definition I have taken from Wikipedia, so generally accepted. There are other definitions which roughly correspond to today, similar. Though. When you talk about cryptography, there are certain simple key concepts we need to understand before we proceed any further. One is plain text. If I write the message to you saying that I am a teacher, you are a student, I am sending you a message saying that you have passed, it is in English. So, anybody who reads that can understand if they know English. That text which I am sending you raw as it is, is called plain text. So, objective is I send it in plain text, you read it back in plain text, anybody intercepting in between cannot in, un, um, understand that. So, I convert plain text using some method. Uh, using an algorithm cryptographic method into something else. If somebody sees that, they will not be able to understand what it is, they will see gibberish. That text when I convert my message to you have passed is called cipher text. Plain text we convert it into cipher text. The method I use, how do I do? I can change letters, numbers, do some other manipulation which you will reverse on your side. The method which lets us do that, the various steps to do that is called an algorithm. So, we have plain text, we use an algorithm to generate the cipher text and the algorithm is standard, if the if algorithm is standard everybody will understand when they have to intercept it once. So, algorithm uses something called a key, the algorithm uses the key to change, I will show it with an example which becomes much clearer now and this art of converting the plain text message into cipher text is called encryption the art or the act of converting cipher text back into plain text is called decryption. So, these are the 6 key concepts involved in, in cryptography, plain text, cipher text, algorithm, key, encryption and decryption. So, let us take a simple example, just now I mentioned that I need to send you a message saying that you have passed or failed as the case may be in a secure manner. So, that when I send you the message you know email for example is not safe, it is not encrypted, if somebody intercepts they should be able to see. So, I should send it to you in such a way that if somebody intercepts that they will not be able to understand what I have sent you, it should look like gibberish. But once that message reaches you, you should know how to convert it back into the plain text. So, let us take an example, what do I want to send? I want to send you the word, let us instead of a sentence, I am going to send you a word called pass. If you get this, you decrypt it, you will know you have passed. What I am going to do? I am going to use an algorithm saying shift by 5 letters. So, what does that what does it become? P Q R S T U. So, what is going to go, what is going to reach you is U, A would be B C D E F. S would be T U V W X. So, if somebody intercepts this, they will not know what it is. If it reaches you, you know what to do. Shift back by 5. So, you convert it back. You shift U by 5, it becomes P, F by 5, A, X by 5, S. So, when I send you the plain text, I am typing plain text, this is the plain text, what am I converting? I am converting it into the cipher text or cipher. This is the algorithm, this and this, shift by 5, shift back by, shift by 5 is algorithm to encrypt, shift back by 5 is algorithm to decrypt. Now, here is the challenge and this 5 is the called a key. 
somebody may know everybody know may know that i am shifting i am using the shifting algorithm so how do i make it difficult for somebody to break this algorithm i need to keep this five secret so i need to find a way to tell you that i am going to send you an encrypted message it's going to be a shifting algorithm and you need to shift the key i am going to use is five so this is one of the challenges of cryptography we need to keep the key secret the the power of cryptography the strength of cryptography depends on be keeping the key a secret so one of the challenges we'll see how it is addressed in different different ways but for the present let's assume that i find a way to tell you the key secretly for example if you come to the class i can give each one of you a different slip of paper which has a number which tells you by how many letters your message has been shifted so once i keep the key secret i can make the algorithm public i can tell everyone that algorithm i am using is to shift so far as i keep the key secret i mean this is a very simple case you can try everything by 26 and come up with the answer but in more difficult cases where the algorithm is more complex the depends the strength of the cryptography depends on keeping the key secret and making sure that all of us know what the key is i know what the key for encryption is you should know the same key that you are going to use it for decryption and if the, there are 20 people in the class i need to make sure that all 20 receive the key in a secure manner only they know each key is different for each of them and they know only they know nobody else does so this in essence captures the all the essential elements of cryptography we have the plain text with the cipher text we have encryption decryption algorithm encryption algorithm decryption algorithm the key and art of encrypting art of decrypting very simple example by the way this is called a caesar caesar algorithm or caesar cipher because julius caesar is supposed to have used this in sending messages to his generals in the field and it's it's a simple simple uh, shifting algorithm transposition algorithm we will see there are more efficient more faster ways which le- which leverage a lot of mathematics we will not go into that but we will try to understand what they try to do so in essence that simple example captures all these six key concepts of cryptography we will see that again so a simple example i need to encrypt i need to do the encryption pass this depicts pictorially my algorithm is shift by 5 and what you receive the cipher text if somebody intercepts the transmission they will see this gibberish if fixes on your side you do the decryption if shifted back by 5 and you get the message that you have passed as simple as that not as simple in real life it's much more complex and there are many varieties wonderful varieties we'll see take a look at that there are different types of encryption the first variety which you saw just now is what is called a two way encryption i encrypt it i take the plain text apply the algorithm encrypt it and you decrypt it using the algorithm using the key and get, recover the original plain text so this is two way i first encrypt and then decrypt so at the end point we both of us have identical plain text this is called this is the most by far the most common type of encryption we do want to be able to read what is sent to us and some common algorithms which which are used for plain text and uh, two way encryption or what is called des triple des digital encryption system that's what it stands for and now the current standard by and large is advanced encryption system called aes the fbi has declared this to be the current standard if you hear names like des triple des aes and all understand that these are all the algorithms which are used for two way encryption remember in each case the key is going to be different the length of the key strength and the strength of the algorithm depends on how much the key is secret and how do we exchange the key what's the length of the key but the algorithms are the same uh, names are common the keys would be different in each case there is another type of encryption you might ask what is it one way encryption that means i encrypt something that's it send it to you you we cannot recover the original plain text whatever we may want try sounds interesting right why do we need that we take something encrypt it store it so as it turns out there are significant number of examples for one way encryption and we will see that blockchain in heavily leverages one variety of it this operation one way encryption is also called hashing also called message digest 
So, I want to send it the word pass, I do the hashing operation on it which is also an encryption, I get a fixed test, the fixed length cipher text, it is called a hash, so fixed length, you will see what it means. This is one type of another type of encryption where we encrypt it, store the cipher text, that is it. Whatever you do, there is no decryption or operation, you cannot recover the original text come what may. The interesting thing about hashing is that depending on which hashing algorithm I am using, whatever may be the length of the original text I give, the final hash produced of is of the fixed length, same length. Whether I give a four letter word like pass, fail or the entire Ramayana, the hash length would be the same. It is also called hashing or message digest. Now, you may ask what are the uses, what is the point in encrypting something and storing? As it turns out, there are significant number of uses. For example, consider one use. Suppose I am running this server into which all the entire class can log in. You all use your login ID and a password. Now, if I store the password in a two-way encryption, if somebody steals the password file, they can recover passwords of all of you. So, it is not safe to store passwords in a two-way encryption. So, typically in all computing systems, passwords are typically stored in a one-way encryption. So, how do, do we, how do we do the match? Once you set the password, I will hash it and store it in a file. If somebody steals that file, there is no way they can recover the password. When you try to log in, when you enter your password, I take that, hash that also. I compare with what I have, there is a match, you are in, no match, you are out. So, that is a very significant use of hashing. And uh, second way, the reason it called the name message digest is, if I have, I have sent you a message, one thing to remember about encryption is that they can be computationally very intensive, they can slow down your system, because they are heavily mathematically oriented, they may do a lot of calculations and uh, uh, work. So, if I use, if I encrypt everything I send it to you, it will can slow down the system significantly. What I need to ensure in this particular case is that if I send you a message, it could be in plain text, I need to ensure that nobody has tampered with, nobody has changed. I have sent you a message saying that you have passed. I do not mind others reading it, but when it reaches you, I do not want somebody to intercept it and change it into you have failed, it is it's tampering with that. So, hashing is used to ensure that message has not been tampered. The way it is done is I send you an email saying that you have passed, I take a hash of that statement, send it to you separately. You receive the statement, hash that again, match the two, then you know that the message has not been changed. The third big usage is in blockchain. Remember, go back to the definition of blockchain. Blockchain is a chain of blocks linked, it is a hash chain linked by hashes. Each block, remember, is linked to the previous block because it includes the hash of that block in this block. Let me see if I have that slide here. Ah, there you go. See, every chain, this is the latest chain, it has a pointer to the hash of this block. That is why we call it as a hash chain. This block is linked to the previous block by a hash of that block included in this block. This block is linked to the previous block by including hash of that block in this block. That is why they are all linked to each other. Each other. And as we have seen in, in the earlier first lecture, if somebody tries to change the data here, go back, goes back and tries to change a transaction, that will change the hash value here. One of the desired qualities of a hash is that if there is a small change in the original data, the final result should look completely different. So, that will ensure <coughs> that and the time taken is the same. So, that will ensure that if somebody is trying to tamper with change one transaction here, they have to change the data in all these blocks, which takes the same time as adding a new block. So, new blocks get added and you will never be able to catch up. So, this is the third biggest usage, use of hashing and the, def, the very blockchain is, is a chain of hashes. The each block is linked by hashes. So, that is the one way encryption. That is, we take a text, encrypt it, that is it, we will not recover the original text come what may. 
Some of the algorithms common names you hear MD5, SHA1, secure hashing algorithm 1, SHA256, these are all some of the names that you might hear, these are all hashing algorithms. They do it with various efficiencies with many desirable quantity qualities like if there is a small change in the original text results in a huge change in the final text, the length of the hash to hash which comes out issues like that. So, for blockchain as we see hashing one way encryption is a very significant application. And the third type of encryption difference one is symmetric key encryption other variety is asymmetric key encryption. Let me explain with an example again the same example I have been using along. I use remember what is the difference between any two instances algorithm could be the same the key is the difference. So, in a symmetric key encryption I am sending you the word pass shifting by 5 you get u f x x you have shifted back by 5. So, the key I use to encrypt is the key I use to you use to decrypt same key no change. Here as I mentioned the challenge is how do I let you know that your key is 5 securely how do I let everybody in the class know that their key is different different. When we are dealing with uh, thousands of users as it happens in all internet sites and all how do we distribute keys it becomes a huge problem it is not easy to securely distribute keys secretly now we have to encrypt the key and distribute a key for that also. So, one of the big challenges in two way encryption is to make sure that we have the same key and securely transmit it to any number of users we might have which can become a nightmare. So, one ingenious solution which has been come up is what is called asymmetric encryption. Before I go into this just realize the wonder of what it is. Two way encryption is like the lock on your house. I put the lock on the door lock it with the key to open you have to use the same key. So, if I and my spouse work I leave late in the morning she comes early in the evening. So, in the morning when I leave I use that key to lock it if I have two copies good she has another copy she comes earlier opens or other is what otherwise what we do we hide it on top of the door sill we keep it in the flower pot any one of these methods can be broken. So, in asymmetric encryption what we have is when I leave to lock I use one key to unlock my spouse uses a completely different key we do not even need if she loses the key somebody can only unlock the lock they cannot lock it if I lose the key somebody can only lock it but cannot unlock what I wonder. Now, if I need to keep the capability to open the door but I want to leave the capability to lock the door with n number of people like my plumber, my maid, my cook they all come home I leave home early I want them to be able to lock the door and leave whereas, only I want to keep the capability to unlock the door imagine what I can do I will make n number of copies of the keys to lock the door I make only one copy of the key to unlock the door. So, I distribute those keys they come they do their work even if I am not at home lock it they come they have to come when I am there I leave they lock the door and leave when I come back only I can unlock we can think of uses like that and that is exactly what is asymmetric encryption. For a long time it was thought that mathematically it is not possible till it was actually demonstrated that it is such a possible and today much of the encryption we will see in the world whether it is on the e-commerce, internet, aggregation, um, blockchain, digital uh, signatures what have you they all heavily use asymmetric encryption. Point though asymmetric encryption is quite computationally very intensive it can slow down the system a lot. So, there are many hybrid systems which use asymmetric encryption for a part of it use symmetric encryption SSL being an example we will see that, but in essence that is what asymmetric encryption is we use one key to lock one key to encrypt another key to unlock or another key to decrypt. Pass I use x as my key to encrypt you get the cipher text you have x x you use a different key y to decrypt it. The terms you might have heard like by PKI, digital certificates, SSL, all these heavily leverage types of encryption, now, asymmetric encryption. Cryptocurrencies also use 
asymmetric encryption. They have we will see what they have a public key and a private key and the private key is the one we need to keep secret. So, okay. so going back for to summarize we have symmetric key encryption any key any system theoretically can be broken like the moment you catch hold of the key what I am using for any symmetric encryption you can break it. It is possible you use very heavily mathematical systems with very strong computers to break the asymmetric encryption also theoretically possible. The safest unbreakable encryption is what is called a one time pad. Both of us agree we print two pads with all keys you take it wherever you go. Every time I send you a message I use the first page use it for as the key for encryption send it to you you read destroy that page. Second time I use a different key <coughs> encrypt it reaches you we both destroy the page. That way for every transmission I am using both of us by agreement using that pad we use one page at a time encrypt it and destroy that that cannot be broken. So, for that has been proven to be uh, most of the systems where we receive one to OTP word one to OTP number like we try to do a transfer using my bank to the bank account it calls me for an OTP to make sure that I am the person doing the transaction they are semi OTP that is they, they require only 4 digits or 6 digits those can be very easily broken, but they change from period to period. The OTP sent to you may be valid for 3 minutes, 5 minutes, 10 minutes if somebody has to break it they have to break it within that period otherwise they cannot break, but a real OTP means we both carry one set of keys with each, each of us for every transmission we use one key after the key we destroy never to use it again that is only known safe encryption everything else theoretically can be broken. And one time pad DES AES are all examples of symmetric key encryption that we just saw the key used to encrypt is the key used to decrypt in all these cases all the users should share a single key. So, see keeping a secret Keep keeping a key secret distributing the key secretly is a big challenge in symmetric key encryption. So, challenge is how to distribute keys however, this is mathematically fast in computationally symmetric key encryption is fast I use both of us use the same key I use it to decrypt send it to you you decrypt and there is a challenge of key distribution. Asymmetric key encryption just to now we saw solves this problem by having two different keys one for encryption one car one for decryption let us see how it works. For every communication there will be a pair of related keys that is one key used for encryption one key used for decryption. I generate a pair of keys say suppose I want to send you a message safely or um, make sure the second part of sending message how do you know message has been sent by me there are two components right I send you a message to you which you are able to decrypt and read and you also need some evidence that I have sent you the message you want an authentication authorized authentication that I have sent a message nobody else could have sent the message to you this is called non repudiation I cannot once I send you the message you should be able to prove that only I could have sent the message if I send you a message like fail you have failed obviously you are unhappy you want to make sure that I am the one who sent let us see how asymmetric encryption takes care of that. So, I generate a pair of keys I make it does not matter which one I make one key available to everyone I put it on my website you can download it I will send it to you anybody can get it I will call it as a public key it is open and I keep my private key safe it is secret it is only with me you generate a pair of keys you put one pub one op openly on your site anybody can get it and keep the other private. So, I have my public key and my private key your public key and your private key let us see I send you a message I send you a message <coughs> and I encrypt it using my private key I have a private key I use it for encryption I send it to you how can you decrypt it you can use my public key the two are different you download that key from my site use it to decrypt it. What does this prove? Since you are able to decrypt it using my public key only I could have sent it to you nobody else could have sent it. Now, how do I make sure that only 
you can read this ensures authentic authenticity that only i i cannot go back and say i didn't send it because you can prove that only my private key could have encrypted it which the public key could have decrypted it how do i send it secretly to you remember you have generated a pair of keys one public and one private i will use your public key to encrypt the message i am going to say you have passed i will use your public key to encrypt it and send it to you and further i will use my public key to encrypt it further i do it twice it reaches you you use my private my public key to decrypt it i use my private key to encrypt it so you use my public key to decrypt it which proves that only i could have sent you then you use your private key which is not available to anyone else if somebody intercepts the message they cannot decrypt it because the second part the second encryption they cannot decrypt it because it is done using your private key you decrypt it and only you can do that nobody else has your private key so let's recap again both of us have two pairs of keys i <coughs> encrypt the message that you have passed using your public key which only you can decrypt because you are the private key and i encrypt it again using my private key so when you decrypt it using my public key it proves the that only i could have sent you and you 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 decrypt it using your private key which only you can do so message reaches you confidentially now both of us don't have to worry about key distribution at all i have made my key public to everyone with they can do certain things with that you have made your key public to everyone despite public key being known to everyone i can safely send a message only you can decrypt it and i can also send it in such a way that you can prove that i have sent it this is the wonder of asymmetric key encryption so one key is made public other key is to be kept secret private key keys are always pay related they are related to each other they don't exist independently if i generate a set of keys i should generate one public and one private simultaneously likewise you should do full two way encryption between two people requires two pairs of keys so with two pairs of keys we can do both encryption as well as the non repudiation or authentication it solves the key distribution problem it provides authentication that means uh, provides uh, confidentiality not authentication and non repudiation computationally it's very intensive and slow it requires factoring large numbers into integers and uh, it but the mathematics behind it is very elegant and beautiful um, we don't have the time to go through that but do understand that this is this wonderful thing where we use two different keys and we don't have to worry about distributing the keys some of the names you would have heard in terms of asymmetric key encryption algorithms are rsa blowfish elliptical cryptography ecc elgamal these are all various algorithms which implement the asymmetric key encryption it's used in pki and digital certificates digital certificate means what or more importantly it it says digital signatures digital certificates and digital signatures are related how do you know that i have sent you the document now we have seen how right i generate a pair of keys use it using my private key i encrypt it and send it to you you decrypt it using my public key that's how you are proving no i cannot say that i have not sent you you are proving because only i would have i have the private key i could have encrypted that so it's almost like signing the document when i sign the document you can always prove that i have signed by matching the signatures this is almost like that so it's used for digital signatures now the comes the question that unless i and you know each other you know that this is my public key not somebody else has published somebody else with the same name sunder hanuman prav might publish that this is my public key how do you know that it is this sudendra hanumant rao who has generated this public key therein comes the concept of public key infrastructure there are companies which issue a digital certificate what it what is called a digital certificate you might have noticed that when you go to certain sites your browser may warn you that the certificates don't match or certificates might have outdated what it means is say if i go to my bank site hdfc bank you know there is this problem of phishing and all those things how do i know that i have actually gone to hdfc bank's site so when i go to www.hdfcbank.com the server sends me its a message encoded by its private key and public key is available 
I know that I can go to any site says this is HDFC Bank's public key, I use that to decrypt and now I am sure that it, it is from that private key. How do I know that this private key is stored by HDFC Bank? How do we know that this stored private key is with HDFC Bank? There are companies like Verisign which certify that, they guarantee that. Verisign says I generated these two pairs of keys, one private key I have given to HDFC Bank, public key is available everywhere. So, when HDFC Bank sends you some communication, some recognition using their private key and if you are able to decrypt it using that private key, that public key, then be sure I am guaranteeing that this pair of keys belongs to HDFC Bank. It is an entirely private and voluntary affair, but has been working very effectively. There are many companies like Verisign and uh, Thought, uh, different companies which issue certificates. Even there are companies in India like some of these e-governance uh, initiatives require certificates issued by companies like Encode and TCS and companies like that. So, it is used for digital certificates and digital signatures <coughs> to make sure that the communication we are receiving from some site, a site which claims to be HDFC bank actually is coming from HDFC bank. <coughs> Asymmetric key encryption is also heavily used in crypto currencies. Essentially what a cryptocurrency Bitcoin is, is what you store is the private key. Bitcoin is nothing but a pair of keys in which there is a public key available to everyone. What you store secretly <coughs> is your Bitcoin that you own. So, how do you prove to somebody that you own this Bitcoin? You have the private key of your Bitcoin, one coin, you encrypt some text using that private key. If somebody is able to decrypt it using your public key, it proves that you own that particular cryptocurrency, whether it is Bitcoin or Ether or Ripple or whatever it is. So, cryptocurrencies heavily depend on asymmetric encryption and SSL secure sockets layer, which is essentially the foundation of entire e-commerce also leverages um, asymmetric key encryption. So, let us briefly look at SSL because it is so common, it is not relevant to blockchain, but so heavily used. So, let us look at it, it is called secure sockets layer, it is the technology behind encryption on the web today and how it, how it shows, every site remember URL begins with HTTP slash something 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 www dash something. If it is secured using SSL, you will notice that it starts with HTTPS colon slash slash www. So, when you see a site, when I say www.hdfcbank.com, the response that it comes back with the home page will not start with HTTP, it starts with HTTP yes, which is a signal to me saying that you is using SSL secure sockets layer to encrypt all the communication between me and HDFC banks server. SSL as it is uses both symmetric and asymmetric encryption. The reason being asymmetric encryption is very computationally intensive. So, what it does is for the initial communication SSL uses asymmetric communication, it uses, uh, uh, in, it uses the asymmetric key, uh, the public key and the combination of public key and private key to generate a key for that particular session, it uses it to transfer safely to me. Once that is done safely from that session on, use a common key. Uh, it is quite complex, but do understand that SSL uses both, it uses a combination of uh, as asymmetric encryption and symmetric encryption to make the transmission faster. Digital certificates are used for server authentication. Once I go to HDFC bank site, it sends back the home page. How do I trust? It sends me some communication encrypted with its digital certificate or its private key. I use public key available to decrypt it and a company like Verisign is guaranteeing that if I am able to do this, that certificate, that server belongs to HDFC bank. Once the server proves to me that it is the HDFC bank's server, it establishes a secure channel by a combination of exchanging the key and sends me a key for that session. From that point on for that session, we use that key for symmetric encryption. So, it uses a combination of asymmetric. For those who are interested, there is enough material on the web and elsewhere. Go through step by step to see how this combination works and this has ensured the security of all the information on e-commerce. Remember, internet is open, anybody can attack anything, they can intercept traffic anywhere. How do we, how are we safely doing all the communication? 
how do i safely send my credit card number with full faith how do i safely send my my bank account number with full faith because of the magic of ssl which leverages this asymmetric encryption and symmetric encryption blockchains use all types of encryption they use uh, asymmetric encryption symmetric encryption and hashing for different different aspects of the transactions <coughs> to ensure the security of information confidentiality and integrity of the operations and this one simple example of how it uses hashing a blockchain is nothing but a hash chain where every block is linked to the previous block by including <coughs> a pointer to the hash of the previous block as part of its data this block block a is related to block b because it stores the hash of block b which is a pointer to block b okay. so this was a little necessary to understand encryption because the my objective in mentioning this is to understand that a lot of work lot of mathematics has gone into ensuring that our data is secure there are different different types of encryption so when you hear terms like hashing or encryption decryption encryption algorithm rsa des aes understand that these are all various techniques and tools used to ensure that the data that all the transmission is secure that somebody cannot steal it and compromise with that it ensures the security integrity and confidentiality integrity and availability of the information this in summary is a brief session on encryption for those who are not technically oriented my objective is for you to know that there is this level of complexity which goes in which has made as secure as possible can any system be fully secure probably not any any lock i can make there will be somebody who can break it any locksmith can break it but these are making it as secure as possible within reasonable limits which should i give us confidence to transact safely that's what we do whenever we go to an amazon site and buy something on amazon whenever we buy something from flipkart we are using without us knowing a combination of all these we are using digital certificates symmetric encryption asymmetric encryption at times our password for example is even used in hashing This completes lecture number 2 thank you